How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to do perfectly elastic collisions. Now, the, what's really interesting about this video, and you won't find anywhere else, is that these collisions will have, these objects will have different masses. So I'm going to show you the shortcut. So the shortcut way of doing these. Okay, so the problem states that you have a three kilogram mass that's moving to the right at five meters per second and you have a one kilogram mass that's moving to the left at six meters per second. The question is, what will their final velocities be after they collide? Now, first thing we need to understand, the shortcut is, is this. In a perfectly elastic collision, okay, we know this, that the momentum is conserved, okay? And in pretty much in all collisions with no external uh, um, forces, um, it is all the momentum is always conserved, okay? Now, we also know that what defines a perfectly elastic collision is the kinetic energy must be conserved as well. Now, this is actually how the shortcut happens. And this is what I'm going to uh, reiterate here. After these two objects hit, now this is kind of difficult. They could hit and bounce back. They could hit and keep going forward. And one can go this way in the same direction. But we, do, we know this. The, the summation of the masses before the collision is equal to the summation of the masses after the collision. So the mass of the system is not changing. So what that means is, is that also the velocities will be equal as well. So the velocity total before the collision must equal the velocity final, so after the collision. So I should say the summation of all these velocities. Okay, so what that means is the velocity and the mass are not changing. They're just kind of given um, I should say the overall mass and the overall velocity of this problem is not going to change. It's just going to be transferred differently. Now, with that being said, is we know this. If we know that this is true, I'll call this A and I'll call this B, just for reference here, that the velocity initial of A plus the velocity final of A, so we'll try a little vector hits here, is equal to the velocity initial of B plus the velocity final of B. So what that means is the mass before and after have to be equal and the total velocities have to be equal. Okay, so this is actually your shortcut equation. So this is the shortcut equation that you will use. And how you get this equation is with a combination of understanding that constant momentum is always conserved and that the kinetic energy must be conserved. And we know that, you know, kinetic energy is just mv squared over two. So what that means is the mass is going to be the constant and this velocity is going to be constant. It's just going to be kind of given in different parts. Okay, so let's actually work this problem out. So how we're going to do this is like such. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the problem above and we're now going to work it. So watch this. All right, so I know the velocity initial of this, which is going to be um, 5. So I'm going to do the A part. This is going to be A over here, and over here it's going to be B, and I'll show you how it works in a second. Plus the velocity final, of, we'll call this A. Okay, remember this is going to be A, even though it weighs 3 kilograms, and this is B. And we're going to set this equal to the velocity initial, so which is actually, this is, remember, um, momentum is a vector, so that means we have the direction matters in this case. So anything going to the right will say positive, anything going back to the left is negative. So this is going to be negative 6 plus some velocity final of b. So what you have here is an equation. So how I got this is just like this. So this is the velocity initial of a, which is 5. The velocity final, I'm not sure what it is. The velocity initial of b is negative 6, and the velocity final of b is what I'm looking for. So now that I have these, I can actually solve for one of these. Let's solve for um, vfb. So this actually gives me this, 11 plus vfa is equal to vf b. Okay, that's actually an equation. How I got this, this is negative 6 because over here it becomes positive, 6 plus 5 is 11, and then I had this equation here. Now once I have this, I'm now going to try to solve the problem using momentum. So how you typically would solve any conservation of momentum problem. The momentum before the collision must equal the momentum afterwards. This system is perfect. So what we're going to do is this. The mass of A times its velocity initial plus the mass of B times its velocity initial equals the mass of A times its velocity final of A plus the mass of B times its velocity final of B. 
And this is how you pretty much would set up any typical conservation of momentum problem, okay? So this is pretty much before the collision. And over here on the right, and this is gonna be after the collision. So this is all the momentum before and all the momentum after. So we're just following these rules. All right, so now let's plug in our numbers. So the mass of A is actually three kilograms. So I'm gonna have three times its velocity initial, which is five, plus the mass of B, which is one, times its velocity initial, which is gonna be negative six, equals after the collision. We're going to have mass of A, which is 3, times its velocity final of A, plus 1 times its velocity final of B. Okay. Let's go ahead and work this out real quick. So this is 15 minus 6 equals 3VFA plus VFB, because 1 multiplied by VFB gives me VFB. Um, and this is going to give me, what, 9 is equal to 3VFA plus VFB, so I simplified that. Okay, so now that we see this, I want you to notice that we have still have two unknowns. But that cheater equation that we get for our shortcut, okay, I went ahead and I solved for VFB, okay? So I know what VFB is. I'm gonna take that and plug it in right there. All right, so I'm gonna take this equation that I found first and I'm gonna plug it into this one. So now I have this, nine is equal to three VFA, plus 11 plus V F A. Okay, so I just took this equation, plugged it in right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and solve for this. This is gonna be 11, so no, nine minus 11 equals three V F A plus V F A. And we can actually see right here that nine minus 11 gives us negative two. And three V F A plus V F A gives me four for VFA. So solving for VFA, we get negative two divided by four equals VFA. Okay, so that turns into what? Negative one half. So what this means is the velocity final of A, so whenever this uh, large object right here impacts this one kilogram object, it will move backwards at a velocity of one half Okay, so one half meters per second, so 0.5 meters per second, okay? So I'll leave it in fractions, or you can actually, if you wanted to, this is also equal to negative 0 0.5 meters per second. Okay, so that's the velocity final of A. So now that we have that, we know that we can take this and we can actually plug it back in to any one of our equations, okay? And if we want to, let's plug it into, I don't know, uh, right here. So now we have that, we have nine is equal to three, and we now know what VFA is. It's negative 0 0.5 plus VFB, okay? So this is gonna give me nine equals to negative 1.5, oh, yep, plus VFB. So solving for VFB, we get 10.5 meters per second is VF. B. Okay, so these are my final answers. And if you wanted to, you could also have plugged it in right, um, right here, up here as well, and it would have gave the same answer because 11 minus 0.5 is still uh, 10.5 meters per second. So this is how you do a perfectly elastic collision, the shortcut method. So again, remember this equation right here that the velocity summation of your uh, object A. Uh, equals the, the velocity summation of logic B, and then you can find this equation, and then you can plug it back into your regular momentum equation, and you can actually solve for a perfectly elastic collision with two unknowns. So I hope this video helps. If so, give me a thumbs up and a like, and please subscribe for more physics content. It really helps me out more than you know. Thank you all. Have a great day.